but now we've gone from, you know, just, just wear this mask. It's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, stay home from school to giving kids substances they used to castrate cattle, mutilating our children by some of the same people who probably years ago would be part of like anti-circumcision protests or something. So it, it, it is, it's those small degrees. And that's where, you know, if you can stand up early and draw that hard line early, you just eat like, like uh, Barney Fife used to say on Andy Griffith, nip it in the bud, you know? Yeah. But people have let it, let, let it get so far and now it's much harder to turn back. It is. And I, so you mentioned writing for a um, scientific publication or medical publication. I, my, so my background, I did grad school, I did undergrad and grad school in the sciences. I was hmm. um, uh, studying biochemistry and then I was doing a PhD in, in comparative physiology using functional genomics to look at adaptive change in different systems. And I left early. I didn't finish my PhD for a number of reasons, but mainly because I hated the elitism of academia. I was, I was actually at UC Berkeley <laughs> of all places, oh, so well. like yeah. the, the bastion of, of, uh, liberalism in America. And, um, I had a lot of contacts and former colleagues from that period of my life because I worked as a research scientist for a while in a lab. Um, and it was so frustrating, man, through the 2020, 2021 period, all of these people, I mean, without fail would say the same things to me. I agree with what you're saying. I appreciate that you're speaking out publicly, but you know, for me, I'm just going to wear the mask, even though I know it doesn't work. I'm just going to get the shot, even though I know it doesn't stop the spread or protect others or, you know, all the, all the stuff that we now know very well. And, and I was saying all this early. So I got thrust into sort of the public discourse because I put out a video in like March, 2020, I think it was Kelly. And I was just saying, I know a lot of you guys are scared and you're asking about masks and stuff. Well, here is the underlying science as to why they're not um, protective at the community level, especially cloth masks and, and surgical masks. And um, this was well-known science in, yes, it was. This, in the circles that I ran in. And Fauci even said early on, no, that you don't have to worry about the masks. They don't do anything because they don't. They're not made to mitigate community spread, especially of respiratory viruses. This is like well-known, well-established science. And so – when I put that out, I was putting that out because at the time I was only doing sort of fitness coaching related content. I had sold my company. I was sort of pursuing passion projects. And one of those was coaching people on their fitness and nutrition. And I was luckily here at the office gym where my studio is upstairs. We didn't shut down. We didn't require masks. We never did any of that stuff. Thankfully, I, I'm in South Carolina. It's a little different uh -huh. than than – a lot of states. Thank you, Governor McMaster. But I was putting out these videos where I was training in a in this public gym without a mask on. Nobody around me had a mask on. And this was the height of the hysteria, you know, March, April, May 2020, right? And uh, people kept DMing me saying, why are you doing this? Why aren't you wearing a mask? And instead of replying to all these people, I was just like, I'll make a video. I'll talk about peer-reviewed science. I'll put it out there. This will be very helpful to people. Man, how naive I was. I put it out there and the blowback was swift and very, oh man, I mean, I lost friends, family members, clients. You blocked me and, and called me names and all this stuff. And so then I put out a post holding up a sign that said, we can disagree and still be friends. Yeah, And uh, it was sort of just directed at those people who had written me off as this sort of evil person who, you know, now, of course, these days, a lot of these people have reached out to me and apologized and you were right all along. It's like, yeah, I know, dummy. I was doing a PhD in this stuff. But um, that went viral. That We Can Disagree and Still Be Friends was shared millions of times on Facebook and it just it exploded. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, other people feel this way, right? And so that's when I started doing all of this and getting involved in the conversation. And it was uh, shocking to me how 
much hate I got for that unifying message of we can disagree and still be friends almost exclusively from the left. And I mean, it was, I I still go back and scroll through the comments sometimes just to get a good laugh because I'm talking the most hateful stuff, man. Like, look at that stupid white supremacist. He probably hates, you know, people of color and thinks that he's superior. You know, all these, all these things they say. Yeah. 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 By the way, I'm married to a person of color and have been with her for 16 years and I have a mixed race child. So it's just preposterous, man. It's well, people... you're, you're racist for saying that. That's the most incredible thing. Like you say, I've right, right, been right. married to someone from another race. Well, that's what a racist would say. Just, you know, we we need to just start giving it back to these people and tell them to shut up. Yeah. Like, well, I do. I do. Of them anymore. Yeah. You know? Because lever levering that accusation, and I think it's it's easy for them because it's lost its value to them. But to me, being a being a an actually being a racist is one of the most horrible things you can be. Yeah. So, if you're going to call me that, it, it's on. You better expect repercussions because, in my opinion, there aren't many worse things you can call me. Mm-hmm. So, in in o- along the lines of what you said, man, this is the craziest I heard. So, uh, <laughs> someone said, well, multiple people actually said, you're only in your relationship with your wife so that you can oppress her and exercise <laughs> your, your white supremacy over her. Oh I'm my like, gosh. I'm like, yeah, dude, if like you all of your life, you have, r- right, right. If you spent one night in my household, you would see that, uh, no, Dave, go take out the trash. Dave, go do this. <laughs> yeah. It is far from <laughs> being yeah. the oppressor. 